Hello, Facebook fans and YouTube fans of DX Engineering. Welcome to our first ever vendor showcase. And uh, this, the vendor showcase is where we are bringing on our partners at, here at DX Engineering that we acquire equipment from to get it to you. And uh, so, as I mentioned in our Tuesday show and Friday show, we have over 150 different companies that we sell through DX Engineering. And uh, our goal is to have what you want on the shelf so that when you need it, it's there and you know we're gonna ship it to you fast. That's what we do. Um, it's fast to work DX at the speed of light and uh, we're working hard every night to make sure that we ship everything that gets ordered. And uh, these, these times during the pandemic, it has been very stressful on our supply chain. So we do have uh, a number of back orders and I'm not proud of that, but I can tell you that our team is fully engaged in trying to get the stuff you want and, uh, and the stuff you need. It's all about getting on the air and having fun. So today, I'm very uh, proud that our first ever vendor showcase, we have Ray Novak, N9JA. Ray is the ICOM senior sales manager, and uh, Ray is going to update us on everything ICOM, and you will be able to ask questions uh, at the end of Ray's presentation. And uh, we may not get to the shout outs because I expect a, a lot of questions, but I also think that Ray probably has got answers that he's going to give you in his presentation. So Ray, why don't you take it from here and uh, let's see how it goes and uh, tell us about the new stuff. Well, I'm going to try to talk about the new stuff. I, I just checked my upload speed and Tim, it's not me being wireless. It's my upload on our network in our community, it's less than one meg up. So that's living out in the, somewhat in the countryside out in Dallas, Texas, we don't get all. The, this pandemic has been a challenge to keep the supply chain going. The biggest thing was not knowing that we would have this many people buying radio gear. So we have stepped up our production. Things are going good at our factory. We just got FCC on the new 705, and we're looking at uh, September, getting a small shipment in for product in October, November. We also, this past weekend, introduced the new ID52. We do not have product information beyond the video that is on our YouTube channel as far as the features and functions of the radio, but I am excited about this new product. Uh, luckily, the bands have been fairly decent, so activity has been good that I've been seeing, and I've, I've been playing around with, with my 705 last week when I was on vacation and having some interesting results on some of the experiments that I was doing. So, Tim, do you have any questions? Well, you know, uh, you introduced the ID52. Yeah, you introduced the ID52, and we get asked uh, all the time when when that radio will come out. Uh, right now, we're hoping before for Christmas. Christmas. That's that's all the information that we have right now. Okay, hopefully before Christmas. That's great. Uh, what about the new tuner? New tuner um, still in R&D. Uh, we have not received a uh, exact date yet, so hopefully that's not going to take too long. But I, I would I would guess at this point before Christmas as well. Okay, that's good. And the seven hundred five. Oh, well, the seven hundred five. Uh, it, it's in production. September and then transit to all of our dealers. So hopefully you guys will be shipping at the end of September, beginning of October. Great, great. That's um, it's really, uh, really super. That, the the uh, demand for that radio is off the charts. So i um, very excited to, uh, to see that uh, come in. And uh, Ray, uh, 
congratulations to you and uh, your team up in Washington for getting product out to us as a dealer as quickly as possible. That's, uh, that's really nice. Um, let, let's talk about uh, some of the uh, products that, uh, like the IC7300, which continues to really be a favorite. It's been incredible as far as sales for it. It is a great functioning radio. Uh, I get so many people that want to debate me on whether it is truly an entry level SDR because of a lot of the features that it has, but it has been an incredible radio. Yeah, and and then you know, uh, talk, let's talk about the the features and functionality difference between the IC seventy six ten and the IC seventy three hundred. Why would somebody want to uh, go up to the seventy six ten? Well, like I mentioned earlier, it is an entry level SDR. So you do, and even comparing it to what you have behind you, those gorgeous seventy eight fifty ones, the front end design is surrounding a someone who's got a, a wire type antenna, a simple dipole. So it does not have the rugged front end. The 7610 has more filtering, including the, uh, the Digicel pre-selector that you have in your 70, 7851s. That makes a big difference when you're working 40, 80, and 160 meters. Now, it, that is a phenomenal value radio as well. Um, the 7610, another game changer. Um, so, you know, you have the 705 uh, game changer. You got the 7300, which has uh, is just changed the whole landscape. You have the 7610. And then how about the 9700? What, what are customers telling you about how they like the 9700? It, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on it. There are it has created an industry of some third party products to enhance the performance of the radio. But to have a direct sampling receiver for VHF and UHF is again, you keep saying it is an industry changer. Um, one thing to go back one step to the 7300 and the 7610. The one thing on the 7300, we have the FPGA. And that does all the receiver type uh, functionality. It then offloads the signal into a separate DSP chip. The 7610 does all of the, the work, including the DSP in the FPGA and keeps it within that digital domain to, to work with. They're both direct sampling. It's just a higher horsepower FPGA uh, and two separate receivers as well as a receive antenna port. So those those are the biggest differences between those two radios. And, and you do have uh, some uh, interesting rebates on the 7300. I see there's a uh, fellow, Glenn is in the chat room. He said he's been deciding on a 7300 him, himself. And uh, so, you know, the price right now is pretty unbelievable after the instant and the mail-in. It definitely is. It's it's a probably the best bargain on the market right now for an HF transceiver of any of the manufacturers. And I mean, I like taking mine with me and working out in the park when I want to do higher power. But side by side, it and the 70, uh, 705 are going to be a very interesting package. So let's talk about uh, the difference. I'm going to shift gears around here on, on the various products. The difference from the ID51 to the ID52. Oh, wow. Um, not having them side by side to play around with a 52 is going to be a little bit taller. It's got a, a transflective color display, which is not touchscreen. The basic functionality is going to feel very similar, but with the color display, we're actually able to go to a graphic interface instead of a text interface. So you'll use the D-pad to navigate around to the different functionality. And let's see, to remember quickly, there's more DR memories in the 52. Um, 
battery packs going to be interchangeable so are the accessories the uh, 52 is going to have Bluetooth in it, so you'll be able to pair it to either a uh, some type of tablet for an app to use to control the radio. Um, probably, I have not tested yet, probably will tether to a uh, computer to do programming over the Bluetooth. Bluetooth headsets to pair with, so that adds a, a new functionality and you don't have to worry about cords tangling you up. There will be a micro USB port on the 52 that will be for uploading and downloading information as well as charging. Very good. And uh, there's a question uh, for you, Ray, in the chat room. It says, uh, will polarized sunglasses see the color display on the ID52? Uh, from the, uh, like I said, I haven't seen one yet. The information that I've received is they have tested it. And you can see it with polarized sunglasses. I don't know the brilliance of the color or anything like that. Um, let's see here. Sean says uh, the announcement for the ID52 says it will do dual receive. Is it actually full duplex? No, from what I'm being told, it is not full duplex, but it will give you the capability of monitoring two frequencies in the same band as well as. Uh, two D-Star repeaters at the same time. So it will be um, a true dual receiver at that point where the 50, 51A plus two is one or the other. You can only have one uh, D-Star repeater going and one analog. So, uh, but I, uh, on the ID52, I can be on a D-Star and on uh, analog. With the that, that, is, that is correct, or you can be monitoring two D-Star repeaters. The unfortunate thing is it's not full duplex, so if you wanted to use an aero antenna to work a satellite, but if you do have a 705 and a 52, you have full duplex at that point. Okay. Um, and I, can, can VFOA be on uh, two meters and VFOB on 70 centimeters? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, let's see here. How about anything new with the 5100 mobile? No, sir. There's not any changes coming down the pipeline for the 5100. It's still going to be a, a rock-solid seller at the price point that it is. Okay. What about Bluetooth on the IC9700? Thank you, uh, Thomas KQ4 Bravo Radio. Uh, maybe through an external device, but nothing native to the 9700 itself. So okay. if, if we haven't introduced it, it will not be a, a, an add-on later on. And uh, uh, here, here, here went the neighborhood. The IC7200, the chairman of the fan club just arrived. And uh, <laughs> this is Jeff from the store, KB8ZWT. And so he's looking for... Another comeback. He's he's been wait, wanting the Beatles to get back together, and he wants the seventy two hundred. Yeah, I don't see the seventy two hundred coming back anytime soon. It just too many too many HF radios at that point. It at the under thousand dollar price point. It just it just puts too many radios down there. Uh, what about the PW two Ray? I was hoping to have information at the uh, expo, but nothing new on it at this point. Uh, the HF engineers are, have been scattered all around Osaka with the uh, shelter in place. So it's really disrupted our R&D teams to be able to work on something. I know they're still talking about it. Uh, there's still speculation on what it will be, when it will come out, but we introduced that to Tokyo Ham Fair as a concept. Okay. Uh, Ray, I have a friend that uh, lives very close to me, and he has a very uh, nice ICOM IC735 that has a problem. Uh, the 735 is how old? Well, when I started at ICOM 26 years ago, it was just in the final years of production. Um, there's... There's a lot of those still out there, but unfortunately, there, there's not parts to do it. 
the best thing is is to try to find one that's that's not functional and hope that the part that you're needing will be available okay um let's see here we have from charlie tango 7 alpha bravo delta when can we ex uh expect about the ic705 reception sensitivity will it be close to the 7300 I don't see why it would not. The the specifications, when you, you look at the two brochures, they look pretty identical. And that's that's going to be par for the course when, when you look at it. But the real test is going to be on the air and how the front ends will handle all the RF. I would not want to put it on one of your four squares or on your 160 antenna, Tim. Right. But, it's, uh, it's not good for I think with a with a buddy pole or uh, a mag loop from Alpha Antennas like the AL705, I think it will work fabulous. But to expect it to handle that pipeline of, of signals that you can pump down, down its instrument. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be fair uh, to the front end on that. So, um, see, Tony says one more question. He says, will the 7100 be around for a while, or are you thinking about changing that too? Well, the 7100 was definitely one of those that fell uh, to the, my failed expectations on sales. Uh, we sold out. I think we've been backordered ever since April trying to keep up with the demand on it, and we should, by the end of this month, get caught up on the back order on that one. There's nothing nothing on the drawing board right now to replace that radio. Um, and I, I had a discussion about both the 5100 and the 7100 on another podcast. And the the thing is, these two radios are at a, at a gorgeous price point where pe their sales are real strong. If you do any type of changing R&D, you're going to see the price go, go back up. And the 7100 would be anywhere between what was it when it first came out? 1274 to 1499, somewhere in that price range. And right now, Tim, you guys are selling it for what? Mid mid 800s before right. the rebates. Yeah. So um, right now, just for the sake of adding color to it, I wouldn't want to see the price increase. I, I just got a text uh, came in from the chairman of the IC7000 fan club. <laughs> and and uh, he was uh, so distraught when uh, that, that radio got discontinued. Is there any thoughts to uh, a, a, 7, 000, a more 7,000-ish, you know, the, the 706, 7,000 uh, uh, for uh, a future radio, Ray? Well, to be honest with you, Tim, I've had so many people comment about the 705 mounting on their dash. With it being a color display, it's got the amps connection as well as a quarter 20 on the bottom. I mean, who's to say that this, this radio is not going into a mobile environment attached to an amplifier to give more power out? Yeah, and that was my next question. How about... Um, anything, any, any discussions, rumors on maybe an ICOM amplifier to go with the 705 to get it up to 100 watts? Not, not an ICOM amplifier. I mean, I've joked around that if you want 100 watts on HF, go with a 7300. And I've seen that mounted mobile too. No, yeah, I have. I mean, the mobile mounting brackets, what is that? The MB5, I believe it is, uh, sells quite well for it. Right, right up on the dash. And here's uh, Skip Longpath. He says, how about a small dual band FM mobile with removable head that can fit somewhere on the dash of a new car? Room is really tight. My answer to that is the ID4100. You can't get a smaller head than that radio. And it's at a very attractive price. If, if you don't want to do anything with the D-Star, just ignore it. But it does have a remote head. If you've got a little bit more real estate, you got a 2730 that is a true dual bander, that VHF, UHF, or VV and UU capability. And both those radios, you can throw a Bluetooth module in and use a wireless headset on it. Okay. And uh, Tony comments, he says, I have two 7100s and I love them. So he's very happy with that radio. And uh, your support, Tony. 
here's uh, Sorbellos's rat. I would like to buy an IC7851. You recommend it since I'm in a pit and around me there are mountains. Um, you advise me. Thanks for the reply. Oh, I hope I hope you get one, and I hope you're happy with it. The, the can't help you much about the the takeoff angle of your RF, but I bet K3LR and DX Engineering could sell you some tower. <laughs> well, I I will tell you whether you're down in a pit or you're up on top of the mountain. Uh, these 7851s are just it's a workhorse of a radio, and uh, Ray, uh, you know fully well when I bought these, I. I bought two spares. That's that's you know that's a lot of money to put into spares, and you'll be happy to know that I've never used them. So almost five years now, and I've never because these things haven't failed, and we got hundreds of thousands of QSOs on these things. Yeah, they're great radios. Yeah, uh, John Miller KJ3X, who does our quality control at DX, says, can we look forward to a Detachable face mobile HF radio like the old 706. Well, that kind of fits in that same question about the, the 7000 display. Yep. And then uh, we got uh, Ricardo says, I love my IC7000. It is my first HF radio and currently still in use. And uh, I know a lot of them are on the air. Let's see. We've got. Uh, we have DX engineering rules. Thank you guys for doing this. You're very welcome, Tony. Um, we, you know, every week we're going to have somebody different. Uh, next week we're going to have Patrick on from uh, Geochron. And you see that one of the Geochrons here, there are four Geochrons here at K3LR. And we're going to have the owner, uh, CEO of Geochron, will be on with us next week. And we will be publishing a, a schedule. Uh, too, on the DX Engineering website. So look for that soon. Yeah, Will I have one of those Geochrons. <laughs> You'd love it. Will ICOM be bringing out something between the 7610 and the 7851? I find the 7851 too expensive, but the 7610 lacking. All honesty, find a used 7851. Yeah. Because any, anything in between... It is going to have sacrifices in performance. I mean, we could we could look at doing a a seventy seven hundred next, but there again, you'll only have one receiver. You can find a good deal on a U seventy eight fifty one out there. Yep, yep. Uh, and Steve V E seven G O Y says, any thoughts on using the seven ninety five to remote into my seventy three hundred ninety seven hundred? I'm guessing he's talking about the 705, and that is something that we've that we've talked about when there was rumors and speculation about the 705, that if it had the client side of the server instead of the actual, I'm sorry, the client side of the software embedded instead of the server, that would be a real cool way of doing it. Um, I know there's been software out there, K9DX, if you remember that, great 160 meter super station he had him. He had a 7800 at home controlling a 7800 there at the station. And all it was was software to take the information out of the 7800 and pump it into the to the one that was remote location. I would yeah. almost bet that somebody will figure out how to make a 705 remote control right. any of the radios out there. Right. I, I I'm, I'm sure you remember when we did that with Leo. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. That is right. We did that. that the same software. Yeah, it was sent, uh, software that N4PY had written. And we did a mirror so that Leo's 7800 out in Petaluma controlled the 7800 here at K3LR. And he had the pile up of a lifetime. Uh, Glenn says, Tim, I didn't know DX Engineering was inside Summit Racing. I'm down the road in Cuyahoga Falls. I'll stop in sometime. And Glenn, uh, thanks very much. Yeah, Summit Racing has a huge retail store, and uh, DX Engineering is inside. We're currently that showroom for DX Engineering is is closed uh, due to the virus and the concerns. But Summit Racing is open, so uh, and you can do curbside pickup or you can pick up at the counter. 
Um, and if you uh, if you go to the store and you need to talk to us, you can always call us on the 800 line. And uh, let's see. I, I know the, the first time I saw the Summit Racing Facility, I, I grew up in a body shop. So I used to drool over the, the uh, catalogs you guys would send out when I was a kid. So, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite places to go to is drool over the cars and all the different parts. And I've got something that I got to restore once I get a shop built. Okay, and I got uh, Steve. Uh, I wonder if we're still live. Is everybody uh, still hearing us? Scott uh, N three R A. Are we still on? Things froze up here. I, I believe. We are no longer on. Uh, Katie, uh, Katie dropped. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, no, no. We're still on. We're still on. That's good. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So let's let's go to some other questions. Um, let's see. How about a replacement for the ID fifty one hundred? Nothing coming down the pipe for either the fifty one hundred or the seventy one hundred. Those are still going strong for us. Okay, and the question is, uh, will the uh, IC7100 be discontinued soon? No, sir. Just like the 5100, no plans on discontinuing either one of those models. Okay, would I be able to charge the 705 through the USB-C? Uh, yes, you you are you do have the capability of charging the radio through the US the micro USB port. Okay, great. And Alpha 71 Alpha Echo is on with us. And uh, see, Delta Echo 2 Tango Radio Fox says hi to everyone and to the DX Engineering team. Top what makes great praise. I have to say greetings from East Germany. And uh, let's see, our sales manager, Scott N3RA, says any chance for an HT that will do full duplex to operate the FM satellites? I don't see anything coming from ICOM right now. I mean, 10 years ago, there were a ton of radios in the product line. We saw competitors remove that capability to lower the pricing and just did what we could to keep the volume going. And right now, the direction that we've got is just a, a half duplex type configuration. Okay. Um, any anything on an HT that can decode or transmit APRS? Uh, not not from ICOM. Okay. How about something to replace the IC202? Perhaps a dual band VHF, UHF, SSB hand portable. I don't recall the, the IC202. But the, the 705 definitely will do two meter sideband. It's it's a multi mode transceiver for HF 62 and 440. Okay, good. Uh, let's see here. We have how about making the RS BA1 easier to set up and run? Uh, right now, with the uh, wizard to set it up with, that makes it pretty easy. There's also a um, UDP hole punch. The the biggest difficulty that we've been seeing with the version two is people understanding how to set up the router to pass the UDP ports from what is it fifty thousand one, fifty thousand two, and fifty thousand three. Right, to shoot holes in the firewall. Uh, yeah, and the the nice thing about that the the RSBA one software that gives you a direct link to the radio. You don't have to go through any other server or services to have that connection between your remote computer and your remote station. Okay. And will the LC192 be available at the same time as the 705? No, sir, it's not. We're already shipping the LC192. So DX Engineering should have them in stock within the next week or so, where the IC705 is going to be at the end of September, beginning of October. Hello from W4TSH in North Carolina. I'm an ICOM nut. I have the 7300, the 7610, and the 9700. So 
Uh, Bobby, thanks very much. And uh, any dust or water protection on the IC705 or the IC52? The ID52 will be just like the ID51. It is a fully submersible radio. I have not seen any water specs for the IC705. Okay. And uh, Royce says, love the 705, hope to get it. And uh, let's see, congratulations from Papa Yankee 2, November Yankee. And uh, so we have a, Ray Novak is on with us here today on the first edition of the Vendor Showcase, which will occur uh, every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, and that's 18.30 Zulu. And uh, if you have questions for Ray, now's a great time to ask them. It is Mr. Icom. He, he's got the guy. He's been there for 26 years, and uh, he knows this stuff upside and down. Let's see. Second request for a mobile, small base, VHF, UHF, SSB, all mode model. Man, I don't know how much smaller you can get and have the performance with 100 watts out and HF and 6. Uh, I believe, what is it, 50 on 2 and then 440 with the IC7100. I mean, yep. you can mount the body somewhere out of the way, and then you've got that small pedestal to, with touchscreen to control here. Uh, the 705, again, that is going to be a small, compact HF, VHF, UHF, uh, multi-mode transceiver. And the reason I pause to say multi-mode instead of all mode is in today's world with all these different digital voice modes, all the digital modes, when you say it's an all mode, no, it does not encompass all modes. Okay, K9SSL is on with us. He says he's 100% ICOM. And uh, Tom says, I have the 9700, and I really enjoy it. And Tom also asked, when is the 5200 coming out? No such animal. Still going to be the 5100. Okay. And uh, so let's see. But we all don't all want HF. Nigel, I think the, uh, the product offering line that ICOM has in the VHF, UHF area is really strong. So uh, do take a look at those. Uh, David says, have there been any known troubles with the Vox system on the IC7610, right? The only trouble that I've heard is trying to set it up properly and making sure that your microphone or headset has the proper impedances that it's not causing it to, to faults on any noise that you hear. Okay. And uh, let's see, uh, Skip Longpath is back on, and he says, uh, here's a new tagline for you. Go anywhere live with the 705. I like that. That's that great. is pretty cool. <laughs> I like his profile photo, too. With the, it looks like the doctor's coat along with the uh, headset and boom mic and sharp sunglasses. I, I don't know if you remember... Uh, uh, back in the day, there was the newspaper uh, magazine, and uh, one of the guys that wrote for it was Kurt N. Sturba. And uh, Skip Longpath is like that. I think we all know who he might be, and he's a really, really smart guy. Uh, Brady says, I see on the back there is a compartment on the LC-192, and will that area be able to carry a 15-inch laptop, or will it be able to fit in the main compartment? Well, considering the backpack itself is a little over 12 inches wide, you'll be kind of hard pressed to stuff a 15 inch laptop in it. Uh, something, a small netbook, something like that will fit in it nice. Uh, I actually have an Android tablet that I use to control the radio with. Okay. And uh, isn't the IC7700 due for a refresh? The 7700, it, it has been discontinued in production. There are just a few left in captivity, in new captivity, I should say. But no plans on doing anything for that radio. Anything on a 1.2 gigahertz radio, HT or mobile, right? Closest thing would be the 9700 that has a uh, 2 meter, 440, and 1.2. Okay, and... Uh, We've got Herm says, love the 7610 and the 9700. So uh, a lot of fans out there. 
And uh, so next week we'll have uh, the owner and CEO of Geocron on with us. And uh, as I mentioned, when we started this afternoon, uh, DX Engineering has over 150 lines. So it's going to take three years before we see ICOM again. I, that's that's going to, boy, that's going to be tough to do. Just think of the number of radios that ICOMs can introduce between now and 2023 when we come back around to it again. And uh, so last chance for questions for Ray Novak, the senior sales manager at ICOM America. Before we shut this down, we're going to get ready for our weekend special. And it, it's going to uh, a special time tomorrow. It's going to be at one o'clock in the afternoon uh, instead of its normal four o'clock Eastern time. So that's 17 Zulu uh, tomorrow will be the weekend special. And don't forget Tuesdays with Tim and Jeff at 1715 Zulu on Tuesday afternoon. That's 115 Eastern time. And uh, there's our friend uh, Lloyd, WB4 Bravo Mike Quebec. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, Chuck K0XM said fantastic job on my 7610 screen swap you know ray i heard nothing but good about how that program went that was really a success and it, it's it definitely has been interesting to try to line everything up i i hate that it's happened to such great customers but those that have actually had the problem that have participated in it they have been uh, very gracious and um just like Chuck's saying here, they, they seem to be real happy with the new display. And uh, Zell says 7300 mobile <laughs> uh, with detachable display. No, <laughs> just put the whole radio up on the dash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Glenn says, uh, glad I caught it now. He says, thanks for the info. I'll definitely look at the 7300 a bit more. And uh, the great thing is uh, all of these uh, showcases, like all of the DX Engineering Facebook Live, YouTube Lives, they're all archived on the DX Engineering uh, YouTube channel. So you can always go back and replay again. I mean, Ray has answered a treasure trove of questions today. And you can even use this video at your club meetings, you know? And uh, uh, so this will live there. And it says, uh, let's see, I want to make sure that we have all of the comments here. Uh, Sean says, uh, thank you, uh, Tim and Ray. Lots of great information. I'm looking forward to the ID52. And David says, thanks for your live chat, answering my questions. Have a good day. And uh, keep staying safe from Mike Mike Zero, Tango Delta Sierra. John asks, will a pro upgrade series come out for the 7300 and 7610? Not at all. Okay. And, uh, oh, here's uh, Angel, Whiskey Papa 3 Radio. And, uh, uh, Angel, we're keeping you in our prayers with the uh, disaster that happened to the dish down there at Arecibo. Yeah. And uh, great to have you on, uh, Angel, with us. So that's... The <laughs> one, one thing to interject. My first contact with the 70, 705 uh, when I was with George and Tommy, we were getting ready to shoot the soda, poda, antenna. My first contact was Angel. <laughs> That's so great. I, using, using a DX Engineering Skyhawk. Is that what he's using? Yeah. And, it, and it, it's um, actually Corey, uh, W3CDG, our, our engineering man, our production manager, actually. He's got the picture that that uh, Angel sent us after Hurricane Maria. That antenna went through well over 100 mile an hour winds. It's got a few bends in it, but it didn't fall down. And it's on the air every time Angel's on 2015 or 10. He's using that Skyhawk. Well, I appreciate him taking the time to to pull a five watt station out of the pileup that he was running. <laughs> well, I think that N9JA call sign is good for a few dB. Well, Ray, thanks very much uh, for being here and coming on. And uh, they always say you remember your first. So this is, a, this is a great time for DX Engineering and a great time for me. Um, I've probably known you for all those 26 years at ICOM. And uh, we will look forward to doing other things with you. This isn't the last uh, 
rodeo and uh we wish you continued success and all the team at icom and uh thanks again for coming on well tim i appreciate you having me on here and yeah we've been friends for quite a long time well before you were at dx engineering and we've gone through 78 wait 781s 7800s there were some 765s in there too i believe there were and yep. now 7851s i did catch out of the corner of my eye a question uh why not an internal antenna tuner on the 705 i'd like to answer yeah. that if i can oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead uh, two things one is form factor to have something small and compact and the other one is the ability to have an external wire antenna so you could have like an inverted v with an automatic antenna tuner that actually changes the residence of the antenna itself an internal antenna tuner is great for a 50 ohm coaxial type load but stray rf is a, is a real monster to try to keep out of a radio so I'm, yep. I'm actually excited to see the AH705, which is going to be the random wire antenna tuner that hopefully we'll have around October to November. Super. Well, thanks again, Ray, and uh, 73 to everybody, for, and thanks for listening. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 17 Zulu, that's 1 p.m. Eastern time, for the weekend special with K3LR. 73 from DX Engineering. 73, everyone.